Okay, so I'm, I'm just going to go around this mesh now and just start to refine these skinning weights. So what I'm actually going to do is do a section of this rig and then pause the video and go ahead and do the rest. And I know I said I'll go from start to finish on this rig. And we have been you know, doing the left and right hand side of the, the entire rig. But the skinning, it takes so long. Well, it doesn't take too long, but you have to really pay attention to it and it's just repetitive work. So I don't want to spend, you know, the next three hours of you guys watching me just painting this mesh because it's pretty self explanatory once you understand the tools, you just need to go ahead and manually um skin this, you know, manually smooth the weights and see how it's working. So the first I'm gonna do this top eye. So just to explain these tools a bit and I'm just gonna um hide everything and then just show the polygons and show the joints just so we can see what we're working with now up here we have the so this is the um, paint skin weights tool so you go to skin edit smooth skin um, paint skin weights tool and the option box so we have the profile which is basically just a brush um, so you can have like a Gaussian brush which is like a quick fall off soft brush which has quite a short fall off oh wait, sorry this has a quick shot a uh, quick fall off so you can see this clearly displayed by the pictures up here or a solid brush or a square brush or you can import different brushes if you want from different files there you have the radius and to get to these we can just hold down the B key middle mouse click and drag. So if we bring back this skinning tool, so uh, if we B and left click, sorry, I was middle mouse clicking. Um, so holding down B, left click, and drag in and out. You can see it's changing the radius of that. Uh, next down here, we have the tools, so we can select actual vertices here. So I could select. Uh, right click one of these, select the vertex here bring up the skin weights tool and then with that vertex still selected I could copy the weights, so hovering over this copy the weights from selected vertex and then I could select another vertex and hit paste so these are areas where if you've got a vertex that's flying off into the middle of space so it's spiking outwards it's a good idea to copy the vertex next to it and paste it onto that vertex just to bring it back to normal we've got the hammer tool so we've got hammer time, which is basically um, you can get the vertex and hit the hammer tool, and it's going to look at the vertexes around this vertex on the mesh, and it's going to sort of work out what their weights are and what's wrong with this one. So, for instance, um, if this vertex here was jumping out, it might be for some reason controlled by a joint at the base of the tail which obviously you don't want. So using the hammer tool, if you click this, it's going to look at the vertices around it and it's going to realize that none of these vertices around here are influenced by this tail. So it's going to remove that influence and it's just going to sort of average out between the verts around it. So that's a way that if something doesn't look quite right, you can select those vertexes and just click the hammer tool. And these are pretty much the ones that we're going to be using for the middle of the time. Um, the next one that we'll be using is the weight type. So we've got the skin weights, and because we used um, weight blended, we've got skin weights, you know, which is a classic linear. We've got dual quaternium. Dual quaternium, you can see selecting the joints has no effect. You know, it doesn't matter which joint we're on. I can, um, so I'll just paint some stuff here. Oops. dual quaternium. So you can see I painted some dual quaternium weights there with the white. You can see selecting different joints. It's not really joint specific. It's not really joint specific. So it's just added to the mesh. So it doesn't matter which joint you're applying it to. And if you ever get that weird icon, it just did it then. So if I just 
if you ever get a weird icon like this with a big X through it now this can mean a couple of things so if this ever happens the best thing to do is just switch from weight blended to skin weights and then switch back so sometimes you get that happening and I've had that a few times where it hasn't gone away for them and in previous versions of Maya that's happened where that hasn't gone away so just reopening Maya seems to have fixed that but usually you can switch between these two modes to get back in another thing is if you've got something like shading use default on shaded so this applies a Lambert the default Lambert to everything but you can see I can't see my skinning weights so this is just debugging it if you can't see your skinning weights it might be something like this use default material so I uncheck that so we can use the skin weights material so I'm going to switch this to skin weights so underneath here we have the joints that are used for the skin in this mesh you can go between alphabetical by hierarchy or flat so I prefer alphabetical and by hierarchy so whichever makes sense to you you can see that we've renamed these quite well so it's quite easy to distinguish what we need to skin with it's quite easy to see so all the antennas are together all the arm ribbons are together so it's working quite well and in here you can select the joint you want to work on or you can go near the joint right click and go select influence and that's going to select it in here so I'm going to work on this left eye and the idea of this is because we mirrored the rig we can also mirror the skin weights so I'm going to work on the left hand side and then mirror it across in a bit so down here we have hold influence so we can lock it, lock this uh, joint so it's not going to edit any skinning weights on this joint I can unlock it I can invert selections so we can select the other joints and down here we have paint uh, the mode so the mode's paint we can select or paint select and I'm just going to stick with paint for this and what we're going to do is we're using the mode paint and how are we painting we are replacing add scale or smooth now these are really just use replace the majority of the time and smooth and a bit of add but usually I want to add I want to replace a solid amount and just add that in there and then smooth it off. Adding is sort of like, so if we just come up to this eye here and I'll move the brush down, what we can do is adding will add a value of 1 and a, a, at opacity of 1. So I could set this to an opacity of 5. So I'll stick this to a value of 1 and I'll put the value down to 0.2 and what we'll add will do, we'll, first time I click it's going to paint point 2 so I, you can see here rubbing it in as much as possible it's only going to go to point 2 but now if I click again it's going to add point 2 so in parts where it's already got point 2 that's going to go to point 4 and then black areas it's just going to raise that to point 2 again so over here it's doing the same just raising it to point 2 but going over here you can see it's adding point 2 so you can do that, that works quite well, you can keep increasing it as you want. And another thing is, if you hold left control, you can see it's saying A for add in this paint tool. If I hold left control, it says A invert. So it's going to inverse the operation. So I'm just pressing control Z to go back but I usually stick with replace so I can see here it's going to replace with a value of 0.2 so ma no matter how much I paint it's always going to be 0.2 I can hit invert which will add 0.8 so what I usually do is keep replace on and keep it at value of 1 and then there's smooth so smooth is basically it's going to does what it says on the tin it's going to smooth those weights so from white to black over here can smooth it. Now at any point, it smooths used so often, at any point, it's like I've got replace here, I can hold shift and you can see here it's switching it to smooth, it's toggling it on and off. And I've pressed it too many times so sticky keys came up but you get the idea, you can hold shift 
and that's going to go to smooth and then let go and it'll go back to whatever you've got selected in here so I rarely ever click smooth I just hold shift with one of the tools I've got in here so for the most part and also you can flood what we did earlier where we flooded it a good thing you can usually do is if this joint for some reason had weird bits of weights around the tail and the arms and everything you can flood with a value of zero and then start going in adding them manually okay so what I'm going to do now actually so I'm going to bring up the outliner I'm going to frame where these eyes are and inside the mesh I'm actually going to select everything except the body which is what we're skinning to and just hide it so we're not seeing those eyes press Y to reactivate the skin tool which is the last tool and I'm just going to go ahead and start painting this left eye so I've hidden the other geometry so I can quite easily see inside this eye and start painting this in and one thing you've got to not get deceived by is I'm replacing a value of 1 so for instance over here where it's black it's all a value of 0 if I click here you see I'm adding this is full white in the middle so it's got a value of 1 and it looks quite smooth you know we've got this grayscale going and it looks, looks quite smooth but don't be deceived because there's no geometry in here we've just got one face so this is a value of 1 and this is a value of 0 there's going to be no smooth between there even though it's smooth shaded we've got this nice grey in the middle there is actually no geometry in the middle there so if we deform this it's just going to be a straight flat face so it's important not to get deceived by this nice shading that you see always remember that it's only working with the actual vertices you have and that's why we added more more edge loops along here so we could actually have that physical you know the extra edge loops to get that extra deformation in there so I'm just painting a value of 1 around here and actually I'll just do it quite rough so get that all in there and we, we could have chosen like the solid brush to do that a bit quicker actually just make sure we've got everything and then I'm going to start removing it so I'm holding control around here and then I'm just going to hold shift and smooth this area here and another thing you can do with smooth another good thing is if you ever want to smooth everything on this area you could go to the smooth tool and flood it and you can see here it's flooding the entire influence and we're just increasing the smooth down there so that's another way that you could use the smooth tool but I don't want to do that I don't want to flood it that much so I'll get to about there and then I'll go to smooth and flood it again so that's looking quite good I'm going to show Nerb's curves just so I can start moving this about and see how it works and another thing we can do is called a range of motion which is basically we can set some keyframes down here and just move the character about so basically as if he's doing some sort of like you know warm up exercise before going to the gym he's going to be like bending doing some yoga moves moving his arms up and down and just getting the full range of motion of this character so the full sort of motion you'd want to see for this character and then what you can actually do is for instance say here we move this arm up and we can see we're getting some skinning errors here you can actually use the skin weights tool whilst in this pose it's not going to affect it it doesn't have to be in t-pose in order to skin so I can see this is the left arm ribbon if we can find this left arm ribbon O1 because it's because we named it correctly I know that O1 will be at the start and we can see here this is the reason we've got no well, we've got quite a decent influence so the next problem will probably be too much influence from this spine so I'll go find the spine 
and there we go. You can see this joint here has way too much influence up here. So what I'm going to do is with the replace, I've got it set to one, but I'm just going to hold control and start painting this away. And you're going to get this really. It's going to look quite nasty for a bit, but it'll be worth it. And you can see it's now going back to the arm. So we're giving influence to the arm instead of, you know, that joint down there, which we don't really want it to. And you're going to find soon enough, I'm just going to smooth this, that the shoulder, you know, this armpit shoulder clavicle area is going to be one of the most problem areas when you're skinning. So don't be too disheartened if you have quite a trouble um, getting a decent skin up here because it is probably one of the most awkward areas to skin because if you think about it, it's a ball joint but the scapula and clavicle work together so you can move that ball joint up down left and right so it's one of the most articulated joints in the body so it means that the skinning in that area is going to be quite annoying moving up again there might be some more influence over here so I just want to check this so you can see this has a bit of influence so That's moving this off. And also a lot of this, um, if we go back to the ribbon, the arm ribbon, a lot of this could be because of this joint here as well, having a bit too much influence. So what I'm actually going to do here is just uh, got 24, press S to key everything, S on frame 1 and just reset it to the T pose just so I can keep checking the deformations of this so you don't want to keep to one pose too much because you start to warp what you actually think it should look like because there it's looking it's not looking too bad actually Also, this means we can sort of look into this area here, add influence, see if that's and that's not what we want. So we could remove a bit again and smooth it back in there. So it's sort of getting there now. So you can see here by just setting a few keyframes of that motion. Stop to. That's not looking too bad. We need a bit, not a bit more work on there to get the top of this working. But you can see by just spending a few minutes refining the skinning of this, it's coming on nicely. You can see here the bendy arm's still now working because we took the influence off the eye. So that's no longer dragging behind. You can check the twist of these looking quite good. Okay so I'm just going to pause the video here in the next video I'm just going to go over this left arm